You know, it's funny, I was thinking about when I was a kid earlier today, and, and I want you all to kind of think about this with me. When you were a kid, you were probably doing things that your parents said, don't do this and don't do that. Don't put your hand on that hot stove. And did you always listen? I know I didn't. And that's the thing. Sometimes we have to learn things for ourselves. We have to understand how we make decisions for ourselves, because that's how we learn things in our lives. So touching that hot stove, remember that throughout this. Fast forward to today, and one of the things, as Chris mentioned, that we all have to think about is all the JavaScript things in the universe. Sasha had a great uh, opening with the surveys to show you all the different things that are out there. How do you keep up with them? We ask ourselves these questions all the time. How do you keep up with the latest things? How do you know what not to be looking into? Where do you spend your time out there? How do you choose the JavaScript framework for you. And I get asked this question a lot. I imagine you hear it a lot as well. How do you choose a JavaScript framework for you? Well, that makes it feel like there can be only one. Can there be only one of anything that's out there at all times? Maybe. But let's flip the script a little bit. That's why I wanted to talk today about this topic, because it's something I feel passionate about. So when we talk about our JavaScript frameworks, we should think about how we feel about those frameworks. Because the tools that we live in are the ones that make us feel right. They feel good, they feel productive. So the question is not to ask which one is best, but which one feels best to you. Hi, I'm John Papa, and maybe we can figure this out together today and how to choose your JavaScript framework. Our choices weren't always easy, and they weren't always good. There were times when there were about 50 of these things out there any given week. Literally, at the tick of the clock, there might be something new on the internet talking about a new framework that you could use. Well, today, the good news is we really can't lose. There's a lot of good choices, and I'm going to narrow the field down to the top three, as Sasha mentioned this morning in the survey, that you all gave feedback on. We can use React, we can use Angular, we can use Vue. And how do we look at these? Are these the questions we ask ourselves? What are the features? What's the community like? What's the documentation like? How fast are they? We can ask those questions, but when we do, it all starts with a simple question of which one feels best to us. We like to sit there and think, how do we choose about them? So where do we start and who do we look to? Well, first, it's simple. Let's look to the surveys and polls. The state of JavaScript is one of the great ones that are out there. And thank you for Sasha and team for doing this for us. And we all answer these questions to figure out what is everybody else doing out there in the world? First, I wanted to share with you one of my favorite questions in the survey. Notice that most of us feel like JavaScript has gotten very complex, but yet pretty much all of us love it. So we like hard things, I guess. Maybe that's why we're in this industry. But it's interesting because then you look at the question that he focused on there about what would you use again or would like to learn? And easily, React and Vue were the top two in that list, and Angular fell behind at 34% when you combine those two stats. So here, clearly, React and Vue are the ones that people want to learn or use, according to the survey. Well, that must be it, right? Well, what about the Stack Overflow survey? A different uh, set of questions, different set of audience in some cases. And this question they asked was, which tools do you use today? Slightly different wording. And on this one, notice that Angular beat out React on this one. But what you don't notice is there's no Vue. Vue's not even on this survey. How can that be? It's all a matter of perspective and how you ask questions and where they come from and who actually answers those questions. So then where else do we go? Do we go to the 24-hour Twitter polls that people like me put out there? We had 11,000 people answer this one. React beat out Angular and then Vue is behind it. But you had to be following me during the 24-hour period that I put it out there and happen to feel like answering the question. Is that a great way to make your decision upon your career? Maybe. So where, do we go? where does this leave us? The surveys have tremendous value. It is one data point that we have to consider, but there's other ways to think about how we make this decision. So use that information, but also our own experiences have to go into this. Well, I talked about in the beginning how we have different features we want to look at, different questions, and our analytical minds always go to features. So which features are the best amongst these frameworks? And if we look at things like components, they're all based upon them, but they all handle them differently. Performance, which one is the fastest out there? 
State management, how do they handle that? And what about lazy loading itself? So in component communication, let's take a quick look at the three. In React, we use props to send data up and down. We also do that with view. We can send our data into components with props. In Angular, it's basically the same thing. We have something called inputs that we can use to pass data down. And the way we can send data up, one of the ways is to use props with React. With view, we can use the emit command. We can also use an event emitter in Angular, but most people use RxJS observables. So there's just different ways to solve the problem. And again, it's how do you feel about those? What about lazy loading? Some of the differences here, they all have it. It's all easy, which is great. In React, you can lazy load components, same thing in Vue. In Angular, you actually lo lazy load sets of components with something called an ng module. You basically group them together into like a bucket, and you can lazy load those. So it's a different approach. But yet, they all have the same features again. What about the common language? By default, most people using React are using JavaScript, Angular TypeScript, and Vue, Babel, with JavaScript. Now, you might think, well, you know, I like TypeScript, so I'll go to Angular. Oh, I like JavaScript, I'll go to React. But what's interesting is TypeScript is now becoming very popular in all three of these languages. In fact, Vue is actually being rewritten with, with TypeScript. Doesn't mean you'll have to use TypeScript to use it, but the actual language itself, the framework itself, is being written in TypeScript. And a lot of people are starting to use TypeScript and React as well. So it gets a little muddier there again. What about their standout features? When you think about React, most people think of components, because everything is a component in React. I love Dan Abramov. Every time you talk to him, what's a component? Everything is a component. And it really is. It's just a function. That's what it's known for. If that appeals to you, that's great. With Angular, it's known as a full framework. That can be either a good thing or a bad thing. Everything's there that you need, or it can feel bloated at times, as we heard earlier. And with Vue, we hear about the simplicity. Everyone talks about how easy it is to get going and to build applications and to keep being productive. Let's take a closer look at one of the more popular features in all three of these, state management, which became really popular with different technologies, one specifically with Redux with React. And with React's Redux, this is effectively what you do. You go and you create your actions and your reducers. You create your APIs to talk if you want to have effects as well. And all your state is managed through Redux. So you might have code that looks something like this in your application. Well, can we do that pattern in other technologies? We can use the Redux pattern in Vue using Vuex. And Vuex effectively has the same things with a couple slight differences, although the patterns change a little, where mostly we create one file to manage the state's reducers the mutations are actually in Vuex instead of reducers, and the actions that are in there. But we still have the same things. And then in Angular, there's something called NGRX. And NGRX is the Redux pattern in Angular. And interestingly, there's a new library out there called NGRX Data, which actually makes writing the Redux pattern in Angular the least amount of code out of all three. But the point again being that all of them can do this, and state management is hard. OK. So maybe one of those appeals to you. But we get back down to features, and really, you can build any app successfully in any of these technologies, any of these frameworks. So where do we draw the line, and where does this leave us? Why is this so hard? Just want to pick one, right? Where do you want to go for dinner? I don't know. Where do you want to go? I don't know. Where do you want to go? You want to go to that Italian place? No. How about that Mexican place? No. How about that? No. Why is picking so hard? Where does this leave us at the end of the day? So one thing I did is I started emailing and asking a lot of my friends in, who are experts in different places. People like Brian Holt and Ryan Florence in the React world, Sarah Drasner and Chris Fritz from the Vue core team, Dan Wallin from the Angular folks. I started asking them, why do you choose the one that you choose? What is it about it that makes you want to use that tool? And they wrote back a lot of different things, and a lot of their answers vary across the board. I like it because of this feature, that feature, that one. But there was one strong common thread. How it makes them feel. They feel more productive. I feel like I can move faster with this one. I feel like the community is stronger here. I feel, feel. That was the common thread that everybody talked about throughout all of it. How they feel about what they choose. So we end 
where we begin. How do you choose your frameworks? My message to you is to try all three of them. Try them all. If you know one, it's not hard to get into the others. I use all three of these myself, and I'm varying degrees of expertise with each of them, and I build different kinds of apps with them. And they appeal to me for different reasons because of how they make me feel when I'm coding. And also, very important, be okay with all three being good. It does not help our industry when we have to have a winner, when we have to say that this one's bad or this one's bad and this one's good. Having three strong options is great because they help each other move along out there. When you build three, and here's an application that I'll share with you, uh, put the links at the end of this talk, that I built with all three. And my goal was to show how these three can look and feel under the covers to build the same kind of application on the surface. So the surface looks the same, but the way the code is laid out works more to how these different frameworks actually function under the covers. Now you might code them. So I did this to try out how they looked and feel, doing something other than a to-do app. And first, I start off with components. And there's various ways to do components in React. I could have used functions. I could have used classes. I could have used TypeScript. I could have used Flow. Lots of different options. I started with Create React App, and I just stuck with basically the defaults that they had there, because those are good defaults. And then I used a couple functions in various places. And then we can see the component there on the left for that. With Vue, I use a single file component using the Vue CLI, everything in one place. And then with Angular, I use the Angular CLI, and I split the template from the code, because that's generally by default what they do, to see how all the different worked. And there were a couple nuances throughout the components based upon syntax or structure, but basically they were all the same. So you can check these out up on the links that we'll share, and here's how the application looked. I built an application with heroes and villains, and the heroes application, which I call Tour Heroes, here it is for React, and then here it is for Angular, and then here it is for Vue. All three applications written from scratch using those different technologies to get a feel for how those applications work. So feel, which one feels best to you? There must be one. We all use something out there. Maybe it's not one of these three at all. It's something different entirely, something coming down the road. But the one that feels best for you is important for you to hold on to and to understand it, to really challenge your own questions about how you ask about these. Challenge yourself to stop thinking about the technical and think more about how it makes you feel when you use these. It'll also give you greater empathy for those who feel differently about how they feel when they use these. Life's an education. It's learned mostly through what you discover on your own and not through what other people, like me, tell you. I love this quote. Just like the burning stove, somebody can tell us which framework is right to use. Use React, use Vue, use Svelte, use Angular. But you will learn so much more by discovering it on your own. Try it yourself. Here's the links for the three of these, and I'll share these on the internet later today, or you can grab a screenshot. All these GitHub repos will share the code. You can try it on your own, or try to build one from scratch yourselves. So which framework do you choose that makes you feel the right way for you? Think about that today. Which one do I choose? The answer might surprise you, but I'm not going to share that today. So thank you very much.